So let's talk about the mother of all autoimmune diseases, lupus. And like all legitimate, recognizable, bona fide diseases, they have to have four things. An etiology, a pathogenesis, a morphology, and a clinical expression. The etiology of lupus is failure of the body to recognize uh, the patient's own DNA, certain types of RNA, histones, proteins associated with DNA, and even a nucleolus as being normal, and therefore the body makes antibodies against this. And what cells of the body, what tissues, what organs have nuclei? Everything. That's why it's a systemic disease. The pathogenesis would be progressive uh, deposition of immune complexes and inflammation in areas uh, where you have nuclei and cells, which is everywhere. Clinically, this is most manifested in places like skin, joints, kidneys, blood vessels, heart, central nervous system. Lupus patients have serious recognizable problems in all these areas. The classical presentation of a lupus patient is a relatively young woman with a renal failure. Uh, morphologically, patients have a variety of skin rashes, uh, kidney diseases, lung diseases, and we're going to uh, take a look at that. And uh, things that are expressed clinically in the disease are, uh, would be things like a positive ANA or an antibody, uh, which you can measure in the lab against some of these substances. And it's not the ANA is not specific for lupus. ANAs are found in a small percentage of non-lupus patients, normal patients, as well as uh, often in patients with other autoimmune diseases. Here's a typical skin rash of uh, lupus. Uh, they call it a butterfly rash because it's usually a symmetrical malar rash. Here's various uh, pictures of it. You can have a uh, skin condition called discoid lupus erythematosus, which is pretty much generally limited to the skin and is not associated with general uh, body disease. If you were to measure the uh, ANA antibodies in the lab, you would see sometimes they react against nuclei uh, in a totally homogeneous uh, fashion, or perhaps a rim pattern where it's only underneath the nuclear membrane, or perhaps reacts against the nucleus in a very speckled manner, or as you can see here, the labeled antibody is uh, fairly precisely against the nucleolus. These are all various patterns, and they're all generally different antibodies. And like I said, they are also found in a wide variety of other diseases, especially autoimmune diseases, but the ANA is classical for lupus. In the skin, you might see on regular light microscopy some general dermal epidermal cellular infiltrate, which if you did an immune stain, you can see that there is deposition of immune globulin in that area, a, uh, a dermal epidermal uh, inflammatory reaction um, at the basement membrane is quite uh, common for lupus. Another basement membrane it loves to attack is the glomerular basement membrane, which you can see here is uh, irregular, lumpy, uh, and thickened, uh, and this is uh, one of the many types of uh, glomerulonephropathies that lupus would cause. If you were to stain this area, perhaps, with anti-IgM labeled fluorescent labeled antibody, you might see a pattern like this in which uh, it uh, lights up uh, like a light bulb. Uh, a very uh, common type of vegetation you'll see with lupus is what they call the Liebman Sachs vegetations. And they're very small growths on the valves. And they're not nearly as big as what you would see with endocarditis. But the curious thing about them, and sometimes this appears as a board question, although I hate to use that uh, nasty B word every now and then, is that um, it's the only type of uh, vegetation that you see on both sides of the leaflet 
which is why this thing is turned back. So you can see that it appears on both sides of the leaflet. Uh, clinically, lupus uh, involves everything. Uh, you can see the number of patients that have some type of hematologic manifestation of lupus is 100%. Even though the kidneys are the most uh, feared early manifestation or expression of disease, it's only present in about 50% of the patients. Arthritis is much more likely to be present. The skin lesions we described, as well as general things like fever, fatigue, weight loss, these are very, very common. But remember, where you have nuclei is where lupus attacks. And uh, if you can think of arthritic, hematologic, renal, uh, things. These are all the things that are 50% or more. Let's uh, uh, open up the door for a few other autoimmune diseases which will attack in the next section. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren syndrome, and scleroderma. All systemic autoimmune diseases, even though from their name you would think they're localized diseases to either salivary glands or joints. These are all systemic autoimmune diseases, uh, which we'll talk about in the next clip.